This is a game that the story, I think, is phenomenal. One of the best video game stories out there. But the gameplay has had a lot of criticism since it came out in 2010 for being very repetitive, and I agree with that. So, if you are somebody who very much wants to experience the story of Alan Wake in real time, but you don't want to invest your time into the probably repetitive gameplay, this is the stream for you. Obviously, I've played this game before, so this isn't going to be a reaction type stream, but it's going to be more of a let's experience the story together. I'll help fill in the gaps if anyone's confused as we go. And I'm going to call out Easter eggs too, because it's fun. Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. Hit us with that line. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. Yeah, you are. You writer, you. I'd seen the hitchhiker too late. Ooh, spooky. No, why would I reverse that? You think I'm a psycho? Sam Raimi car. It is in almost every one of his movies. Evil Dead, Dark Man, Multiverse of Madness, Drag Me to Hell, Spider-Man Trilogy. Let's get this out of the way now. This is not a horror game. Um, it is a horror story in an action-adventure game. And you'll see what I mean as we go. There he is. Oop! Oh wow. He's talking mad trash. I'm out of here. See ya. LB and left stick. Ah! And this is his nightmare. And he's being chased by someone in one of his books. This whole prologue sequence is basically one big tutorial. Kinda wish they just started the game where the story starts instead of doing all this, but... Oh well, what can you do? Play steward, here to rescue us. Mm. Are you seeing what I mean about the horror story thing? Tom the Poet. Well, my perfect Tom the Poet poster. I'm sure that's not foreshadowing in any way. You should go into the light. You are only safe there. That is James McCaffrey's voice again, by the way. Max Payne, Director Trench and Control. Rest in peace. I have something important to tell you. It goes like this. For he did not know that beyond the lake he called home lies a deeper, darker ocean green. Do you understand? No. <laughs> yeah, see, this is straight up a tutorial. Let's get a closer look, shall we? Look at him. Oh, he's following me. I don't like that. I don't know how he pushed me. Oh, flashlight. Thank you, spotlight from heaven. Burn. So he's covered in darkness. We have to burn it off with a light. He can't be saved. He's still a threat. He is still your enemy. Here, take the gun. I have to know, does he know that for certain? <laughs> does he know that for a fact? Jeez. There we go. Does he know that for sure that there's no saving them? Oh, hey oh. Is he still down? Oh, there he is to the right. Ugh. Goodbye. Oh, there's more of them. There's more of them. Even more of them. Get away from me. Okay, so these lights are safe havens. The enemies disappear whenever you get in one. Boom. That's satisfying. Oh my god, he's out of breath. Come on, we gotta move, brother. In case you didn't see that tornado behind us. Yeah, my man is struggling. Coffee thermos. Yeah, don't vape, kids. It'll do this to you. I may just have to do it on camera. Light one out. He's here. Alan, wake up. Nice pun. Baby, just another nightmare. Oh, what's up, girl? Everything's fine. You dozed off. Get used to seeing Alan waking up. It is like 20 times in this game, without exaggeration. Welcome to Bright Falls. 
The bridge in that train is uh, iconic to this game. This game feels huge, even though it's so linear. And look at the plane. Here it comes. Good time to visit our town. Beerfest is just two weeks away. Beerfest, huh? Did you hear that, honey? How long are they gonna be there? You have a lovely wife, if you don't mind me saying. You've never, you haven't even talked to her yet. You're just, he's just complimenting on her looks. I'm the night host at the local radio station. Oh, that's the wrong person to tell that you're Alan Wake. Look, Mr. Maine, I'm on vacation. In fact, I'd appreciate it if we could keep my being here just between the two of us. You can trust me to be easy. And the test determined that was a lie. Damn, All right, you jerk. Yeah? Hey, bestseller. That was my favorite writer. That's the main character on the other end of the phone, by the way. What did he just say? He said, we'll see who has the last laugh, city boy. You're going to notice right off the bat that this game feels huge when it's really not. And there goes a Deerfest float. Yeah, it's just world building things that they didn't have to add but did all over the place. We need to stop at the local diner to get the cabin key from the landlord. A Mr. Carl Stuckey. He's waiting for us. I'd forgotten there were still places like this. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake, Alan... Oh my god! Oh god! I am your biggest fan. Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. All right, so a couple things. One, just don't blame me when you fall in love. Shut up, I'm trying to talk. Nothing but black coffee under a thin layer of skin. Racist. Um, anyway, this entire diner is straight up the diner from Twin Peaks, the TV show. Shut up, Rose. Shut up. Shut up. Or is your wife with you? I can show you the town if you want. I get off work at six. Oh my. Thanks, Rose. We'll be sure to keep that. I need to hang around the NPCs more often. I've never heard that voice line either. And coffee's a big thing for Sam Lake, the creative director for Remedy, so that's why we collect coffee thermoses and everyone won't shut up about freaking coffee constantly. I could really use a tune right now. You need to give it a good solid whack. Prepare to be quick time event. I just failed a quick time event. Whack. 2010, baby. Quick time events. All right, you old coots. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. <laughs> so go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, me and my wife are trying to go to a cabin for like two weeks, apparently, and nothing will stop me. Not even Carl's bowel movements. Mr. Stucky? Mm. Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. You don't take that. You a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you Your cabin? And to meet your wife. I insist. There's no universe where you agree to that. Oh, and she's just standing there too. Just Aldrin Lake is a special place. Very inspiring. A woman in funeral garb hanging out in the dark hallway. Yeah, no thanks. You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. <laughs> Is she still standing there, I wonder? Let's go see. She's gone. Her leave, but the old lady was gone. That's a first for me, too. I've never actually tried to come back in here. It's been a long time, Tom. Good to see you. My name is Alan, not Tom, but thanks. The Andersons, they're, uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Yeah, let's go ahead and set some ground rules now. I'll play dumb on a couple things, I'll ask questions out loud, and then when it's time to explain something, I'll explain it. Riddle me this, though. If you go to a place where you're supposed to meet up with your landlord, and someone who's not your landlord says, Hey, here's the key to that house of mine that you're staying at. Shouldn't you know not to take this? <laughs> Shouldn't you know that that's not right? But then again, she knew that his wife was with him, so like she knew she had enough information that it was probably plausible. I got some flashlights, just in case. I got some flashlights, just in case this game requires it. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! Mmm... Whose keys do we have? Because they're not Carl's. Once upon a time, I was a successful writer, but that was a long time ago. It's gorgeous, Alan. Diver's it's Isle. All right. Alice had a phobia. The fear of darkness. I wanted to make sure we were inside with the lights on. Before Hello, sunset. bird boy. So Alice is afraid of the dark. This is an extremely sweet cabin, though. Unironically, I would want to stay here. Bird leg cabin. Yeah, it fits. There's friggin' birds everywhere. Oh, my God. Hitchcock's movie, The Birds. Big, uh, big references here. 2010 quick time event. 
Activate. It's dark in there. We need lights. What the? Hello? Anyone here? I heard that. So I've, I've never actually explored this cabin right now. I've always went and just turned the power on. I definitely just heard footsteps upstairs. That was terrifying. Coffee thermos. A shoebox filled with books by Thomas Zane sat on the shelf. For a moment, the oppressive feel of the nightmare I had seen on the ferry returned. <sighs> there had to be a fuse box or a generator. Yeah, I know, Alan. I'm exploring. All right, so I got a photo of a diver's suit. Hi, Pat. It's Rose. I know who that famous artist was. It was Alan Waite, wasn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. Pat Main's voice is amazing. Whoever the voice actor is that plays him, his voice is great to listen to. I'm 99% sure the voice actor for Alice, Pat Main, and somebody else all passed away between Alan Wake's 1 and 2. The island had once been the site for a love story. Maybe it would be that again. Yes. Yes, Alan. There's probably a fuse box or a generator in the shed. Don't talk about the lights, talk about our love. Alright, generator's on. Time for some love making. Pretty sure they're here to try to rekindle their marriage. Like, it's not going super great. He's got writer's block. And so they, they came here to get away from everything. I thought we could be happy here. It's still extremely ambiguous to me how long they planned on staying here. Oh, look, look up there. I love that. Alice had told me about Cauldron Lake Lock. I've never seen that before. The old building used to be a hotel. But these days, it was no longer open to the public. Surely that's not a remaster. Now I'm questioning if that is in the original game, too, because I've never seen that before. I said this cabin would be somewhere I'd like to stay, but no, le legit, that lodge up there, we'll see it later. That's that's Kingard's dream vacation. Time to rekindle this marriage. Honey? Where, where are you? Alan, I'm upstairs. I have a surprise for you. Yes, you do. Well, hello there. Yes. I'm not the surprise. It's in the study. Go take a look. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> it better be another wife in here. Surprise! I guess I have a small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of scenery would get you past- Damn, Alice, you- Everyone- Hey, keeps... hey, hey, just hear me out. There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. So now you want to get me committed? No, it's not like that. That's not- Ooh. Alan? I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. He just shoulder checked the piss out of her. He shoulder checked her and then went out in the dark that she's deathly afraid of. How to handle a domestic dispute. Alice? Uh oh. Cabin had gone dark. All the lights were. Alan! That doesn't sound like someone scared of the dark though. What the hell? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's Hitchcock around these parts. Where are you? There they are. Good lord. Did she just say stay away from me? Was that her that said that? Who's in there with her? Oh, ma'am. Oh, no! <gasps> Perfect form, Alan. That was a monster of a dive. <gasps> Alice? We're in an underwater car. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. The Creator's Dilemma. By a Dr. Emil Hartman. So don't forget, to her, this wasn't just a vacation. She brought Alan here to take him to meet this doctor. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. This is a, a very linear game, but it doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. And this is all, like, different spots of the level. Like, I can see different areas that we will be going from here. Probably because this game was originally an open world game. In concept, it was. Like, you were going to be out in the daytime, and then at night, you and at night you were going to, like, hide in a lighthouse from forces of darkness, but they said, nah, let's make it linear instead. I say good move. The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. In the scene on the page, the hero was attacked by an axe murderer in the woods at night. Marula, um, get used to that. <laughs> the lazy line reads. So it's been a whole debate with Alan Wake since 2010 because Matthew Peretta, the voice actor, is extremely good and extremely ranged at voice acting, but he plays Alan Wake very, like, monotone. 
because the character is meant to be like he's creatively dead inside he's supposed to be that way now as to whether or not that makes it good is up to you to decide right it is intentional and there are parts of this game where it calls for matthew peretta to not play it monotone and you'll see the obvious difference uh, alan wake's original character model had this big ugly red scarf on him it's kind of funny this manuscript says it's written by alan wake he has no memory of it and it's describing things that have not happened yet and the page we just read is about him running into someone who's covered in darkness just like from the nightmare he had at the beginning of the game. Oh, Anybody there he was. Please, I've been in an accident. In oh. oh hell, Carl. That's a dead guy. Ducky, please to beat you. That was our landlord. So he just killed a guy. Great. The Shining. It's like Nicholson in The Shining. They didn't have to call it out. Like we we, we could have we could have caught on. That's what it was. Listen to the voice. When you just listen to their voices, I think it's extremely creepy. But when you read what they're saying, it sounds really stupid. <laughs> oh, it's moving the whole trailer. Oh, that's how we get out of here. See ya. I'm out of here. Go, go, Alan, please, God. There we go. Where'd the tractor go? Did it fall down already? Oh my, yeah, it's already down there. Oh, they're here. So we can boost our light. Boom, and it uses battery, or I can just passively hold my light over somebody and it doesn't use any battery at all. Decisions. So yellow paint and listen to the sound effect. Eerie hand painting. Ah, come on, Alan, you're talking over it. So this yellow paint only shows up in the light. There it is, there's a sound effect. And that's a sound that we're only going to hear whenever these things are around. That. Sounds like breathing. The only time yellow paint is okay in a game, right? Oh, that's right, I forgot. Yeah, no, we can't, we can't like yellow paint. Yellow paint's bad. No, don't put yellow paint in our games. Yeah, imagine having a nightmare one night where people are possessed by darkness, and then the next day you wake up, and then you start to run into people who are possessed by darkness. I take that as Rose isn't necessarily in love with Alan Wake. She just is obsessed with him. Like, she just wants to... She's just a rabid fan, basically. You didn't read she was immediately enraged by Alice or hates her or anything. You read that she wants to be their friend. Yeah, think of the manuscript as, like, if this entire game were written as a novel, there's things that are... that have... What was that? Yeah, no kidding. There's things that have been written about that Alan isn't necessarily present for, either before this game or like side events that are going on. It's one of the many collectible types in this game that actually adds to the game when you find them. The coffee thermoses are, yeah, you know, just whatever. Speaking of which, there's a coffee thermos right over there. How many people are we cutting down right now? A whole logging camp worth of workers all got infected looks like the book i couldn't remember was either a terrible and true prophecy or an act of creation that had rewritten the world i began to hunt the pages feverishly for they held the answer to the mystery yeah so that's a good question about the manuscript pages are are they telling the future or are they creating the future we don't know don't and here's a coffee thermos But I have a theory that originally this game was going to include animal enemies. Because you, you see how these people are getting possessed by this darkness. And I think animals were originally in the cards to be possessed by them as well. Like, why would we have just listened to that radio show about a guy losing his dog? And there's a couple other things later, too, that I'm like, hmm, really sounds like they wanted to have animal enemies in the game. Okay, so he goes in the gas station and a bright light comes on from a TV. <laughs> Boom, I love it. Slow-mo. All three of them. The sheriff looked at me suspiciously. Okay, so at some point we're gonna meet the sheriff. This is another collectible I'm talking about. We're not gonna sit here for the whole thing. This is an entire, like, five, six minute episode created as a parody of the Twilight Zone. And there are several of these throughout the game. And the TV show's called Night Springs. I don't know, I'm kinda interested though. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to watch this, but this is interesting. Oh, it's unplugged. It got unplugged. 
Don't do it. Don't do it. He did it. Never actually sat and watched the whole episodes. Is Alan Wake hallucinating all of these monsters or are they real? Marula, we don't know yet. That's a perfectly valid question at this point in time. Oh, there's a lot of these guys. Flare gun, flare gun, flare gun. Go. Yeah. Oh, this is Stucky. This is Stucky right here. This is a boss fight. Ah, oh, crap. Get away from me. I am stuck. I'm stuck. Get away from me. Oh, I ran out of ammo. Alan has the lung capacity of a 90-year-old man. Got him. Whew. Yeah, that's that same deer float we saw from the ferry. The couple never showed to pick up the keys. Things have been fuzzy. Poor guy. Like, he, he got stood up by some renters, and the next thing you know, he's getting knocked out in his gas station at being attacked by something. If the day count on the banner was right, I was missing a whole week between the night we got here and now. When we came in on the ferry with Alice, and the night Alice went missing, or went into the lake, looked like, that was seven days ago. Seven days later is when Alan woke up at the at the wheel of the car. So in the original version, there's some spilled oil on the ground. I got a bone to pick with this game, if that's true then. Yeah, look, knocking over a can of oil. The page very clearly describes that oil was knocked over and spilled in here. Do you see any oil? But it is 100% there in the original version of the game, because I pointed it out in my breakdown video. Ah, there's our blinding light. I'll keep writing. And our TV. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. That was Alan sitting in the cabin in that writer's room, to be specific. Oh, look, Nordic walking. This is what Carl had been talking about. There's a lot of Nordic influence on Alan Wake because Remedy is Finnish. So you gotta, you gotta remember that. Keep that in mind. All right, let's call the cops. Ooh, be prepared for a plot twist, y'all. Calm down, Mr. Wake. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake. Not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please, please. I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. We'll swing by the lake, and then we'll go to the station, okay? Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? Yeah, put a revolver around in his head. no cabin there. This game has the structure of a TV show. It's very much an homage to things like uh, Twin Peaks or... Why am I blanking? Help. Help. What am I... Th Twilight Zone. God. Okay. Yeah. Let's hit a recap. I came to Bright Falls with my wife, Alice. Now, she's missing. Alice? The sheriff took me to the lake Alice and I had stayed at, but the cabin had disappeared. All right, we're flashback three years earlier in their apartment in New York City where they live. Yeah, so Alan Wake, he's a writer, and his wife is a photographer, and she does his shoots for his books. Oh, it's Easter egg time. All right, so Easter egg number one. This is a manuscript page, but not from Departure, not from the, the manuscript we've been finding, because remember, this is three years earlier. This is a page that Alan wrote and remembers writing for his book. They're based on a character called Alex Casey, who is basically Max Payne. If you listen to the manuscript, all the other ones are Alan Wake narrating, but these... It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. ...are James McCaffrey, the voice actor for Max Payne. He's writing about the death of Alex Casey, his character. And if you think about it, Alan may not actually be a... It might be heresy to say this, but Alan might not actually be a great writer. He's been a successful writer. He has one very popular series. His character is literally Max Payne. And, and if that wasn't enough for you, if it wasn't enough for him to be living in New York, the narrator of the pages to be the voice actor for Max Payne. Here's Max Payne's Berettas right there in a case. They're gold for some reason. I don't know why, but that's Max Payne's signature Berettas right there. So the remaster, if you look right there on the wall, has these QR codes. In fact, let's go ahead and scan it, shall we? I want to see what it takes me to. It takes me to YouTube. What on earth? Ooh, that's interesting. I was trapped here. You gotta remember, this remaster came out before Alan Wake 2, and after this game had been out for several years. And they were building up to, I, I guess, Alan Wake 2. Maybe the Control DLC hadn't come out yet. Alright, so what am I doing for Alice? Turn on coffee for her. I told y'all. Again, Sam Lake loves his coffee, man. Coffee's on. Great, thanks. I'll need it if I'm gonna finish this by tomorrow. It's of miracles, my dear. James McCaffrey passed away. Well, you seem to think so last night. Oh, 
Oh, Alice, you saucy lassie. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. Oh. Alan! Power's out. Honey, it's a power outage. I I've got the flashlight. I'm sorry. I just... It just really spooked me. I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light. This is this conversation is pivotal to Alan Wake lore, by the way. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help you too. <laughs> yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> Seriously. Thanks for this. Thank God for blackouts, am I right? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. Every character in this town feels like a real character. They do such a good job of that in this game. The bulbs will need changing soon. You can't change them in the dark. I'll be sure to take care of it, Miss Weaver. Have a nice day now. As you can see, she's a little obsessed with maintaining the light bulbs of the whole town. Refuses to step on shadows. Things like that. Cynthia Weaver knows what's up. She doesn't like the dark, and she tries to keep all the lights on everywhere. Thornton and Mulligan are bigger characters in Alan Wake 2. You never actually see them in this game, but you hear them in different places. Ooh, like a thin woman in a black dress. So Alice saw the lady in black when we first got to the cabin, but she didn't say anything about it. She thought she was just imagining things. So all these guys have been camping. The guy on the right right there kind of looks like Andrew Tate. To the sheriff. Come in, Mr. Wake. Your phone's on the desk. The battery was dead. It's charged now. <laughs> Excuse me. I need to take this. Did that say Verizon? I remember the original game had sponsorships from Verizon all throughout it. Help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife. Who again. is this? Uh-oh. Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. After you ditch the cops, you're going to meet me in Elderwood National Mr. Park. Mr. Wake, can I help you with anything? Peak. Midnight. Hey, buddy. In the drunk tank, eh? Turn the lights on. Sure. Sure. Why not? There you go. You're all right. You're a good guy. Thank you. Don't Thank you. Anybody tell you different. Appreciate it. All right. Enough of that. Manuscript page. Oh, you beat up somebody? That wasn't Danny. It only looked like him. You want to know who it really was? I'll tell you who it was. It was a gosh darn... It was a space alien. All right. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Oh. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I Dr. Hartman in the flesh. He's I'm here. Feeling... The guy that Alice brought us here to come see. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Nah, piss off. Talk to my wife. My clinic is a place where... Oh, hey! Oh, my! Take it easy. Oh, the main character, he's here. Our lord and savior. Nobody move. Get your hands off of my client. I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. Yeah, you are. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Nobody asked you. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. All hail Barry. What the hell was that about, Al? In his floral shirt and puffer jacket. The man has no clue what to dress for. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Rose. Oh, I was just thinking about you, too. Okay, so here to rent a cabin. Oh, I don't... Red. Jeez, mister takes a swing at everybody. So this part's really funny. Watch this. You shot a guy Watch this. And his body just wait here. Alan tells him to wait. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. But Dog! Who hurt Max? Who did it? What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. That one, I assume. Use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. He got lucky. No, no, no. Max we will avenge you, Max. Okay, watch this. So now we're going to walk back in. And the conversation continues. No! You're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Funny farm. Seriously, We here, and here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Don't mind me, but everything I do from this moment on will be justice for Max. Oh, so that's Lover's Peak all the way over there. That's where the kidnapper wants to meet. So I'll just go ahead and say it now. This this whole segment right here with the bear traps and Max is basically just foreshadowing for us as the player to understand that we're about to see a lot of bear traps. 
And also, it's world building in that it's letting us know in this park there are a lot of hunters in the area right now. We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Deliverance. Dr. Hartman is here. He's spoken directly with Alice on several occasions, which I don't know why Alan got mad at him. I would bet you anything Alice called him first, so is Alice the main villain of the series? Probably. Thank you, Coffee Thermos. See, this is a nice little lodge, too. I'd be happy to stay here. The Max Crusades begins now. Somebody put a bear trap out for Max, and we will not have it. We still don't have any confirmation that anything we've seen so far is is real. Like, we have no confirmation that Alan didn't do something to Alice. Ugh! That actually got me. I knew it, I knew it was there. Dang it. <laughs> this is where some environmental storytelling starts. This cabin's looking pretty good. No, but when I turn around... Ooh. And of course, there's nobody there. Now, this cabin does not look as uh, tidy as the last one. The windows are busted out, as you can see. And there's blood on the floor, and the body's gone. I, I assume the crows got him. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. So, that page tells us that Rusty's gonna get attacked. And he said, it happened just the way it was on that page. Meaning, Rusty read a page at some point. It's about to pop off. We got trees falling down. I'm coming, Rusty. Oh my god. Something blasted this place. I'm coming, Rusty. It happened just the way it was on that page. I found came true. It knew. So dark. Oh, his leg. His leg is jacked. Oh, that's bad. Here is our first maybe confirmation that what we're seeing is real. Rusty's talking about a page that he found. Hi, Max. Yours. Oh, my goodness. Good boy. Him's is a good boy. Don't worry, Max. My crusade for you continues. Ah! That was too late. That is an axe. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Rusty! Come on, Alan. Come on. Come on. I hear Max barking. Hunters. We saw missing posters for hunters that uh, had gone missing, and Rusty mentioned there were hunters in the park. I assume that's who we're dealing with. He's gone. Something had torn Ooh. a mammoth-sized hole in the wall. A mammoth-sized hole. Oh, no. Buck Bucktooth Charlie's still there hanging. Worst part of the game coming up. Here we go. Are y'all ready? And look down at the ground. Uh, why they gotta do that? This is my John Wick story. My Alan Wick story. Max the dog is dead. It's time to get some vengeance. Now. Oh, Rusty. Did you do this, Rusty? He won't go d Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Dude. There we go. Why'd they gotta kill Max, man? I think Remedy knew. They knew that we don't care enough about Alice Wake. So, they killed the dog to give us some motivation. Yeah, 1 out of 10 game, I'd, I'd call it 0 out of 10, more like it. At least the dog wasn't taken, I guess. If they forced you to kill Max, yeah, that'd be a problem. That's a good, that is a good point. But you're not crazy! Ow, be careful. Okay, so again, a little bit more confirmation that other people are seeing what Alan's seeing. Barry saw something, we don't know what. And, and, remember earlier how I said I think taking animals were supposed to be a thing? There's do not feed wildlife $100 penalty. That makes sense that it's in this national park, right? That's fine. I still think that they had planned on having animals be taken enemies in this game. Other than the crows. Moonshine Cave. Moonshine, brother. Moonshine ain't all it's cracked up to be, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. You'd be forgiven for not realizing it, but that means we fought two bosses in this game already. Stucky and Rusty. And they're basically just bullet sponge versions of regular Taken. Whoa, ho! 
Yeah, that's what I thought. So this game usually announces to you that enemies are in the area. That time it, it didn't at first. That dude just walked out from behind the rock. So is it still making sense what I said earlier about how this is a horror story in an action game? Like, there's a lot of shooty-shooty going on, a lot of action going on, but the story is still a horror story. Dude, when it gets dark like this and the sound design picks up, it's like the darkness itself is moving. That's a pretty cool effect. Whoa! They did it again. That's a big dude. I saw that. Yeah, he ain't throwing nothing at me. Oh, I'm out of ammo on my shotgun. I only had two? So be it. Yeah. So I like that I can use my flashlight and reload at the same time. And you can passively use the flashlight without using batteries. It's extremely helpful. Come on, Alan. Hut two, hut two. Come on. Knees to chest, brother. Y'all ain't catching me. I got a light right here. Oh, no! The light went out. Come on, generator. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> that was cool. Nice. Champion of light, baby. Let's go. You can't stop the Max Crusade. Ooh, I see you. I see you. I saw that. Hey, how about a flare gun? Yep. You thought. You all thought. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Okay, so if you'll notice, the first chapter, we fought lumberjack workers, or lumberyard workers. In this chapter, we are fighting hunters. Oh no. Agent Nightingale. An agent named Nightingale is going to come into the story at some point soon. You will know exactly why I had the reaction that I just did when he does. Oh, it's Camel Boy. Come on, we gotta get moving. More of them coming. That flashlight's kid stuff. The flares will keep the bastards away. All right, insult my flashlight. Like, okay, I'm doing what I can. I just found a flashlight. You can see them too. Well, of course I see them. Come on, we gotta move. Why? <laughs> because that's the way the story goes. Yeah, but let's move. Yeah, he was the guy on the back of the ferry that was smoking the cigarettes, and he was like, we'll see who has the last laugh, city boy. He was the kidnapper. Okay, so Alan is saying there's no coincidence that he just happens to be here right now and know who I am. He's got to be the one who kidnapped her. Okay, so now I don't have my gun. I'm having to get light on these guys for him while he shoots. These flares do work really well. It makes them all back off, too. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. More stuff, more stuff! No! <laughs> what are you doing, Alan? There we go. Get away from me. Don't touch me! I'm working on it. Shut up. Here's Lover's Peak. Oh, look, there's a little heart and everything. There's a thermos over there. I'm going to get that. I'm coming, coffee thermos. I'm coming. Yes, sir. All right, look, I applaud Remedy's desire for variety, but I think actively taking ability away from the player, I don't know who finds that fun, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm not I'm not gonna be a big wiener whiner about this whole segment, but I, I'd be lying to you if I said this was even remotely as fun as the rest of the game. He can't kill him fast enough. Dude, you gotta shoot, man. There you go. There you go. He keeps switching between targets instead of picking one and just unloading until they're dead. So they keep piling up. Yo, that's actually a pretty dope jacket. Where's my wife? I knew you were going to say that. I read it all before. You're a hell of a writer. Congratulations. You're going to bring about something glorious and terrible once we get you some uh, proper editorial control. I want the entire manuscript. Or she's gonna suffer bad. You touch her all. Knuckles Magoo doing what he does. Oh, you got the gun. Take him. <laughs> he did not get away that fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just didn't. I swear I'll kill you if you hurt Alice. Do you hear me? Come back here. Yeah, see, there's an example of Matthew Peretta going off. On more than one occasion, Alice's fear of the dark. So Alice is afraid of the dark, not because there's no light, but because she feels like it corrupts what it touches. It's it's thematic, okay? It's thematic. It's like you learn the combat ability up to this point, and then it, whoa! Did I just? I ran straight past that bear trap. Justice for Max. Did I miss it? Warn me about these traps. It's only just one. Not a big deal. Pretty easy to dodge. 
We'll dodge that one too. Oh my. <laughs> oh my, that's overkill. Okay. Good lord. That's so many of them. Yeah, there's no shot that he escaped this far ahead. I heard it! Oh, I wish this game didn't announce to you every time there were enemies. Because the, the, the few times that it doesn't, it's so effective. But every other time... It does that right there. Oh, generator. Let's get it on. Get it on, shall we? Oh! They just baited me into that. Coffee thermos. I had heard the plane fall. It made no sense. It was clear that it had just fallen here. But it was very old and obviously hadn't flown in decades. And now there's this old plane that has crashed in the middle of the woods, but it looks like it has not fl flown in decades. Oh, let me back out. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. How did the plane get here? Who knows? It's a mystery. We will get that answered later. One other cool thing I notice is that Alan, whenever you're being approached by an enemy, he turns and looks the direction that they're coming from before they get to you. What's our objective right now? Ah! Not get jump scared. Oh, haha, <laughs> hit a tree, idiot. The logging site was a mess. The modular office had been pushed off the cliff. You don't have to care, but this game takes the time to explain that although you're mowing down dozens and dozens of enemies per chapter, they're all still real people whose absence still goes noticed. Like, it doesn't go unnoticed. Like, just then we were reading about the deputies who were at the logging site looking at all the destruction and damage. Point is that although we're, we're just swimming through enemies, and massacring people by the thousands. It's not, they're not just nameless NPCs. They're all people there with a purpose. And the fact that they're all going missing, the world still recognizes. The darkness wears her face. Chainsaw. You cannot use passive light on them. need to follow a logic that fits the story. A single flaw and the magic is gone. The story dies. Alice dies. Alan in the TV is writing- uh oh. Ah! Nope, see ya, I'm out of here. Get away from me. I got stuck. I was gonna just bolt, bolt out of there, but I got stuck. Oh yeah, there's driving segments in this game, by the way. I don't know why these are here. Oh my god. I don't think I've ever been over there before. Looks like somewhere I can walk. Let's check it out. This is a big area. This isn't even where I'm supposed to be. Right? Oh my god. I did not like that. This is a mistake. <laughs> this was a mistake. Get me out of here. Now we're back at the place that we started this chapter, so the cabin's right up here. You deliver the manuscript, and you can have your woman back. Simple as that. I need a week. Two days. You can find it easy. City boy. Let me just speak up on behalf of all rural living people. Uh, not all of us talk like that. <laughs> not all of us think calling somebody a city boy is actually an insult, because it's not. I don't live in a city. It's never once occurred to me that calling someone a city boy is, is a good insult. Is that Barry crying? That's funny. <laughs> He's scared. Oh, uh, hello bird boys. Where are they? There they are. Yeah. That's a lot of birds. Hit them. Yes. Feels like that page was written to remind you to get back to the game area. But you probably are right. Which, to me, that then begs the question, why'd they make the area in the first place? <laughs> why, did, why did they even let me go that far? Oh, here comes another cool story beat. Hey, Al. I'm... I'm sorry for thinking you were having a psychotic episode, man. I wonder if writer's block actually works like that, where it's physically painful to try to write something. I doubt it, but I wouldn't know. Bear Bear. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. She don't sound right. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Old Year Diner. Good girl. 